This is part two of assembling a high quality model steam plant and in this episode I'm testing the Cotswold Heritage 7VR FP model steam boiler plant. And this is what the customer supplied to power a Stuart Models Twin Victoria steam engine. That's an engine with two one inch bore cylinders and also a Southworth Engines duplex steam pump, the large one. And of course this very well made steam plant is very nice but it's far too small to power such engines. So I'm going to test the steam plant anyway and give you my thoughts on it at the end. The first thing to do of course is to put some water in the boiler. And for that I'm using my electric pump just because it's quicker than moving the hand pump handle. But I'm taking this opportunity to check that the hand pump works and yes it does. First impressions, I really do like this hand pump. I like the design of this, it's good. And in no time at all, owing to the power of electricity, the water gauge is half full of water. And a good tip when using gas fired boilers where you can turn the heat off instantly is always start off with half a glass, don't fill it right to the top, it takes too long to raise steam. The hand pump ram feels a little bit on the dry side, so I think a bit of lubrication is called for. And this is my normal lubricating oil that I make up myself, and it comprises of 40% steam oil, 30% machine oil and 30% rapeseed oil that you get from the supermarket. I don't know what to make of this gas tank, quite apart from the fact that it's painted silver. I don't think I like that, but that doesn't affect its functionality. The main problem I have with this tank is it's not standard. Cotswold Heritage call this type of tank a sure fill tank. The problem is I can't fill this tank. I don't have an adapter that will fit it. All the adapters that I have that screw onto the gas canisters are the standard type. So I'm going to have to bypass this tank system for the moment. By the way, a quick word about gas fired boilers. I'm about to test run this boiler on my workbench and I have one of these just above the workbench. If the gas setting and air settings are not right on the burner they can emit carbon monoxide so it's quite important not to die during the test. And a quick health and safety warning never run gas fired boilers or coal fired boilers inside. Always do it outside it's much better. And it's also safer firing a boiler outside because you can of course run away if anything goes wrong. I found it better to light this boiler via the vents at the bottom rather than from the chimney. And when I figured out that it was much better to light the boiler from the bottom vents rather than the chimney, the sudden hair loss from most of my forearm stopped. In no time at all the boiler got quite hot, but then the small amount of gas that was in the tank ran out. So I was trying to think of the best way to fill this tank. Should I use my airline adapter and connect gas to it instead of compressed air? No. I'm going to disconnect the gas pipe and fit a piece of silicone rubber tubing to a commercial gas valve that goes on a canister and then the other end I will fit to this pipe. And that's just what I'm doing at the moment. Here I'm lighting the boiler and this is much better. This is a new gas tank and it holds a lot more gas. And now, after a very short time indeed, steam is now issuing forth from the union on the boiler. And quite a good amount of steam. But I don't think it's enough for this. The big problem with model steam engines is really summed up by the phrase that LBSC used to use. LBSC was the pen name of a man called Lillian Lawrence. LBSC used to write articles in the magazine Model Engineer many years ago. And he used to say, you can't scale nature. And what does that mean? Well, here is a steam engine, a model steam engine. It's quite small, but it has two one inch bore cylinders. And if you look at a full size steam engine, like an engine like this would be in a mill, and it would be quite large, in fact, monstrously large. And the boiler that would supply the steam for an engine like this would not be very big, really, relative to the size of the engine. And what they used to do, if one boiler wasn't sufficient, they'd put another one in alongside it, and so forth. For instance, I don't know how many there were, but on the Titanic, which had massive steam engines, there were banks and banks of boilers. Anyway, I have to remember that this is a steam test on a Cotswold Heritage boiler. I will make a video explaining in great detail the size of boilers for different engines and why. But for the moment, I need to crack on with this. I've quickly silver soldered a piece of pipe, and I haven't cleaned it up or anything. It's only a temporary lash up to make this thing work. I have a piece of silicone rubber from the boiler's outlet to the valve on the inlet of the engine. Really, I should have put the valve on the boiler. I do know about this, but I didn't have one that would fit the boiler. 
because the thread on the steam outlet of this boiler is quarter inch by 32 threads per inch and I don't have too many of those, I use quarter inch by 40 threads per inch. I thought I'd better fit a displacement lubricator and this puts steam oil into the steam line and lubricates the cylinders. You will notice that I've used some nylon cable ties to hold the silicone rubber onto the thread of the union. While I'm waiting for the boiler to generate some steam, I'm just oiling around the engine. And then I open the small valve and rotate the engine. And any steam present, because there isn't much at the moment, not much pressure at all, but there is enough to come through the engine and warm up the cylinders. It's not that the boiler's slow at raising steam, it's actually quite a good steam raiser, but I've filled the water gauge right to the top, because the whole point of this test is to see if this boiler has enough capacity to feed the steam engine. A good indication that the water is starting to boil is if you look at the gauge glass, the water's bobbing up and down inside it. I rebuilt this engine a while back for a customer, and there's a video series all about it, but I never noticed this. And that's why it's always best to test on steam, not just use compressed air. I don't always test the steam engines that I rebuild on steam, because sometimes the heat of the steam can damage the paintwork. And there's a development. There's almost enough steam to make the engine go. But this engine doesn't have any drain cocks, so quite a lot of the steam is condensing to water, and it just needs a little bit of a shove to start it. And in this clip you can clearly see that the engine is running under steam. I haven't given the little boiler any time at all to build up a head of steam. I want to see how it performs flat out. So this is the best that the boiler will do with the burner on full, the water level almost at the top of the sight glass, and of course there isn't much steam pressure. Because this is just a lash up test using silicone rubber tubing, I can't let the boiler generate much pressure, otherwise it will just blow the tube off. This part of the clip is running in slow motion. Before I run a steam boiler, I always check that the safety valve is working, and this one's working fine. And in a similar way to the coal-fired boiler that I featured in the last video, this boiler, because it's new, is priming, but this will get better after about half a dozen steamings. By lifting the safety valve and watching the water spout come out, obviously the water level in the boiler has dropped, with the subsequent pressure rise. Less water, same heat, equals more steam. So the engine is now running faster. The engine's beats on steam are slightly uneven, but I'll fix this by adjusting the valves when I get the steam plant finished. I'll stop talking for a while and just let you listen to the engine, first of all in slow motion. The engine's run on this low pressure steam lasted quite a lot longer than on the video. And now you can see where the water level is. There's still a bit left, still a bit to go. So really, this boiler is far too small, but it will run the engine. The Stuart Models Victoria is a cast iron steam engine, so it's very important after running on steam that you flush out the water. First of all with an airline, then inject some steam oil mixture, and maybe repeat this two or three times. The principle being that first of all you blow out the water and then coat all of the internal components with steam oil. And in this clip you can see the steam oil coming out of the exhaust pipe. From what you've just seen, what are my conclusions regarding this boiler? It's the Cotswold Heritage 7VRFP model steam boiler plant. It's a very simple boiler plant, very easy to manage, very well made. I'm very impressed with the engineering quality. I don't like the aluminium top cap, I would prefer that to be brass, but that's a personal thing. I love the pump, I think the pump is a really nice piece of kit. Unfortunately, I can't really comment on the gas tank, because I don't have the adapter that screws onto the gas canister to fill it. It is of course not designed for anything remotely resembling a Stuart Victoria, or in this case a twin Victoria. So for this steam plant, we want the convenience of a gas-fired boiler system. And this gas-fired boiler plant is certainly very easy to use and very well made. What I'm going to try is using two of these. 
the owner sent off for another one, and we're going to have two boilers linked together, which should produce enough steam to run the twin Victoria steam engine and the steam pump. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.